Hey everybody, welcome back to our, uh, our Detroit of 4-Tube TRF set. As promised, we're going to go into a little more depth here on how I got the radio working. So you saw in my last shorts video, <clears throat> excuse me, that the radio is working well and it's doing what it's supposed to do, but it wasn't without its challenges. So as you recall, I stripped the entire chassis, I've painted it, and it looks nice. It looks like it's going to last for a long time, which is great. And then we've reassembled everything. We also fixed the transformer. If you remember, the transformer was mounted crooked because of the hole that was cut out. We fixed that, and we've installed our electrolytics in this uh, in this existing um, can. And as you recall, this is what was in there. There were these two uh, four microfarad caps inside here. So we're going to show you how we did that, and then we're going to talk in general about some of the challenges. So let's just take a look at the top real quick. There's really nothing spectacular to see. I am going to replace these wires and put quick disconnects so that I can remove the chassis and not have to remove the speaker every time. So that's going to be the last thing I do. This wire is solid wire, so we'll do something similar to that. And again, we've got our Arcturus um, 47 output tube, our 80 rectifier, our 57, and our 58. So that's what we've got here. Our tuning cap is nice and clean. We've got our dial light rewired properly, and we've got our coil put back in. So let's flip it over. And let's talk about what we did with the electrolytics first. Okay, what you're looking at here is the electrolytic uh, capacitors. And again, if you recall, these boxes that I showed you came up through those holes. And what you see there are rubber grommets with a wire coming up. So how did we solve it? Well, it was relatively simple. I measured the box on the other side, the, the metal canister that held these capacitors and it was one inch by one inch. And I was debating on what I was going to put in there. I was going to try to put something like this inside, a cylinder that, um, that I could put the caps in and have it come through. But I saw these four holes down here and said, you know what, there's got to be a better solution. So here's what we did. I looked over on my bench and I had a, a tube that was there for another radio I was working on. And I saw the box like this. I said, hmm, I wonder what the size of this thing is. And I measured it. It was one inch by one inch. All right, that works. So that box will fit inside of that metal canister. So how are we going to mount them? So I opened up one side like this, and I took a hole punch like this, and I made four holes. Of course, I was more accurate than I am being here. And I put my electrolytics in there like this. Like so. This is just a demonstration, but I want to show you how I did it. And I put the two electrolytics in here, like so, and I made sure the polarity was correct. And then I hot glued them together, inside here, and then closed the box. Oh, I'm sorry you're not seeing that. And I closed the box, and I sealed it. So essentially what I have inside here, when I take these out, you'll see it, is I have a box where I had four terminals coming out. So what we've done here is we've put a, we've installed it inside that metal can. We've made sure that the positive side was here and the negative side was here. And we put these grommets here just for safety to make sure that nothing touches the chassis. So that's how we solved it with a simple cardboard box. I had never seen a square one like that before. So I'm glad that was fixed. So that solves that problem. Now the other problem we had, and I'll zoom back out a little bit here, the other problem we had is that the volume on on-off switch, which is an 8K um, potentiometer, it's actually um, a loudness control in this radio, um, the switch wasn't working. So power, on-off switch. So you know, we, obviously we tested that before we tried to use the radio. We knew it wasn't going to work. So I took that apart, cleaned it, and essentially uh, that's working again. The uh, pot, the carbon inside is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it will do for what we need. Um, it does work, and you know we'll give you a demo at the end of this video so you can see it again. So we fixed that. You'll also notice that we replaced all the resistors. There was a 300 watt resistor here, wire wound, and lot, not a lot of resistors in this set, but they were all dog bones. So we replaced that. And then when you look here at the transformer, this is the thing I want to cover a little bit here. So let me find something to prop this up a little bit. Okay, that should do it. So um, first thing we did was we, 
we cut a notch in the uh, in the chassis so that the transformer can mount correctly straight so it does that we installed the safety cap which goes right to the chassis from the AC line there was a cap, uh, 0.1 capacitor there so we put a safety cap and we also replaced the resistors now the problem with this set is I don't have any documentation as you recall so I had to figure out which uh, connections belong to the um, the filament winding for the uh, for the tubes the filament for the 80 rectifier and the um, the high voltage side and of course the primary so we drew all that up and we we documented that uh, best that we could of course I took I took uh, good notes as well when I took everything apart to make sure that I had all that documented in case I needed it and this is essentially what those notes look like okay so here's the diagram that I used when I took this thing apart and you'll notice that I did, really didn't know where anything went I just used number identifiers and I've got one here that you can see so I put numbers on the wires just so I had a route to go because I just don't know enough about this radio to do more and we had our two resistors here and we have the center of that going to our capacitor can which is right here um, and then we have um, you know one side goes to the uh, negative on the uh, electrolytic capacitors we've got our primary our secondary and we've got our filament lines here so we figured all that out we've got that all documented now and um, and we're in good shape so we put that all together um, everything worked well the only thing I <coughs> excuse me had to add that wasn't there is this black wire and if you remember when I showed you the first episode there was a, a black wire coming from these capacitors that was just kind of wrapped around this um, this connection right here just hanging in the breeze well this is for our electrolytics so that was a, a pretty easy thing to figure out so um, you know for me it was okay now is this thing gonna work now the only thing I didn't change are a couple of little capacitors right here this is a point zero zero one and there's a point zero zero one here I didn't change this or this I wanted to see if the set performs correctly and it does I've also uh, installed a terminal strip here for the uh, capacitor that goes to our antenna right here a long wire antenna so we've got that done and then we put um, strain reliefs on the power cord right here and also on the antenna wire so um, so we've got everything in, in, in really good shape and um, you know for me the only thing that really threw me for a loop on this thing and I don't know why I probably shouldn't have but the thing that threw me for a loop on this radio, and I did have to reach out to Brendan just to confirm. So you'll see here, this is, this is the AD tube, the rectifier tube. Here's the plates. Here's the filament line. Well, the filament line actually is B+. If you follow this, it's B+, plus for the radio. And I was like, how can the, rec the, the B+, plus be on the filament line? That didn't make any sense to me, um, but um, it is and it's uh, honestly not something I've seen before typically in a you know in a 5Y3 the filament is isolated but we're not talking about 5Y3s here we're talking about 80 tubes older tubes 80s and 47s and 57s and 58s so that threw me for a little bit of a loop um, not because I couldn't get the radio working but because I didn't understand it so I had to identify which side was positive and negative because this schematic doesn't tell you that so uh, obviously figured out this is a negative bias set so um, we have our positive here up on top and it's feeding you know the, the uh, output transformer and all the various coils and things so we've got this now in, uh, in in very good shape we've got our field coil here that's on the speaker and um, and we've got it all done so um, really simple radio really not much to it um, but you know obviously there were a lot of modifications done when this was uh, when someone worked on these capacitors and of course they made the sin that you're not supposed to do when you uh, replace capacitors and that is leave the old ones in circuit they did and um, they had a new bunch of caps connected to them here's one of them so uh, we got get rid of all that stuff and got that cleaned up so our radio is in good shape it plays you've already seen it play um, so what we'll do now is we'll just monitor the B plus we'll show you what that looks like coming up and then we'll end the episode and then we're going to start focusing on the cabinet um, the cabinet is going to take more work than the radio did I can guarantee you that it needs work I have to mill a piece of, um, of um, cove molding that's missing on it to try to match it 
And if I can do that, I will. If not, I'll have to make my own and just replace it all around. And then we're going to uh, stain it and, you know, all that stuff and make it a nice finish. So uh, let's turn this thing over. We'll fire it up. You can watch, you can watch the B-plus come up, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so we have our radio connected. We have this meter. It's, a, it's an O1, O1 B41T, and I want to show you this meter. It's pretty cool. I think I've showed you this before. It's actually Bluetooth, and it will display on my phone. So before we turn it on, let's get that connected. So what we do is we hold this blue button right here until we see the Bluetooth symbol. It's right there. And then on the phone, we launch the app, which is right here. And we hit the plus sign, and we look for something that says BDM. There it is. Okay, there's our meter. So we're going to put that here. We're going to shut this light off so you can see it. I think we should be okay by putting this here. Let's flip it around. Okay, so let's turn this thing on and see what happens. So you can see we're settling at about 205 volts uh, B plus, which is uh, right within spec for these tubes. So I think we're okay. Depends on the strength of the station. Again, I'm pretty impressed how this thing is performing, especially for a TRF set. So that's pretty cool. So that's the uh, that's that's the B plus. We'll turn this off. Let this drain down. So this is a cool little meter. It's an O1 O W O N B forty one T plus, and it just lets you see things a little bit clearer. And it's also good when you're creating videos so that you can see what what I see. So uh, that makes it a little bit nicer. Um, we could also put the light on here. There's a light on this thing, but it's still a little bit hard to see. This is a cool little feature. You know, I should actually show you one more thing on this that I thought was interesting. Okay. So you can see the radio's playing. But check out one of the features this thing has. I can, it keeps a cumulative uh, count of the voltage and it draws a graph as it does it. And, and I think not just the committee, but I think most of college football uh, thought... You can see our voltage has dropped up there because we have a really close station. In the country, it wasn't just the, and you could actually save this data off and, uh, and analyze it if you'd like. But you can see over time, it looks like it's every second it's sampling. And um, you could see exactly what your voltages are doing over time and it graphs it for you. That's a beautiful thing. And then you can export this out. So I wanted to show you that. Let's close that. So we still felt as a committee they were one of the top four teams and we put them in at And then there's some other features that we can do. We could record it, that type of thing. We can go full screen. There's our graph again. And then we can do a whole bunch of range settings and things with this with this uh, application. So if you're in interested in getting a meter like this um, that does this stuff, it's really, really cool. It's got a bunch of features that you can use. So I wanted to show you that. All right, so uh, one last thing I'm going to show you, and then we're going to end the video. Let's let this drain down, and we'll be back in a second. Okay, last thing I want to show you on this set is the speaker. You know, this is really nothing uncommon. The speaker had a number of little holes in it. Um, not sure from what, probably just dry rot. So we've repaired all that with a coffee filter and with some Elmer's glue. And I do notice that the actual speaker itself is not adhered to the basket. So it kind of lifts up. So we're going to adhere that down and make sure that that's glued down properly before we reinstall it. But the speaker works great. It uh, specs out perfectly. It's got a nice tone to it for this kind of set. So we're going to fix that as well before we put it back in the cabinet. So that explains some of the some of the weird things with this radio. Um, again, 
I'm happy with how it's come out. Very simple set. It's going to look really nice when it's in the chassis, in the uh, in the chassis, in the cabinet. And uh, we have a very early Detrola set here. So I hope everyone is well. Uh, I'm going to be away for uh, about a week or so, so I won't have any videos up probably till the week before Christmas, somewhere around there. And I do plan on coming back and showing you where we are with our Radio Craftsman RC8 cabinet that we built. I haven't given you an update there. I've been slacking on that one, quite honestly. Um, but I want to show you where I am. I'm just about close. Uh, I've had so many other things going on, including forming a new band and playing drums in that new band. I'm a drummer now. And um, that's been keeping me really busy. So, yeah, still got a lot of things going on and work and all that, you know, life it gets in the way. So, um, so I'll see you guys uh, in about a week or so. I hope everybody's doing well. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody.